This is Leicester Till I Die TV. Watch and subscribe on YouTube and listen on your podcast platform. Hi everybody, Jerry Taggart here. Now be sure to watch Chris and Leicester Till I Die TV by subscribing on YouTube and following them on social media for all the latest Leicester City news and information. Come on you foxes! Strap yourself in because we're set up, switched on and ready to go. Lester Till I Die Transfer Show with Lachlan Onions. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Transfer Show, where I go through all players that have been linked with Lester and whether or not we should purchase them. If you haven't already, be sure to check out the first episode where I look through Chengiz Undo and whether or not we should make his loan spell a permanent deal. In today's episode, I'll be going through Florian Talvin from Marseille. This season he has 8 goals and 7 assists in 29 games to go along with his 86 goals and 60 assists for Marseille in over 250 games. Talvin is one of your typical modern day right wingers. Cuts in from the right, has a shot on his left from edge of the box or inside the penalty area. But very similar to any winger nowadays. Similar to what you see from Harvey Barnes except on the left hand side where he'll cut inside onto his right boot and have a shot from around the edge of the box. He will be available for a free transfer end of season, which definitely plays into our hands as he would normally be a more expensive signing, around the 20 to 40 million, somewhere in that range, which would be near like one of our most expensive signings we've made in our history. So this gives us a chance of being able to sign him as we do face some competition, as we now have the most expensive part of any transfer gone. We just have to worry about offering good wages and in our case, qualifying for Champions League, so that way we have that to lure him to our club. So, Florian Dalvin, he's 28 at the moment, and so he's basically entering the peak of his career now. So, it wouldn't necessarily follow what our club normally do, where we try and sign young players and keep them at the club for a while, or if we do sell them, sell them for way more than what we picked them up for. In this case, bringing him in would be something more for the short term, for probably two to three years, and that would be just to bring success to the club before we find a long-term solution in that right-wing position. So, as I've mentioned, he can play right-wing, but he also is capable of occasionally filling in on the left, but also this season he has played as either an attacking midfielder or as a second striker, which would be very handy should injuries come into play and we need to change formations, similar to what we have this season where we're now playing two strikers up front. So... Thalvin, he has Champions and Europa League experience, which will come in handy. Not as much as it would have if we signed him at the start of the season, as we've now got the entire squad with European experience. And still, a few of the guys have Champions League experience from our loan Champions League campaign a few years back. Uh, Thalvin, he's an excellent set-piece taker, so add one to the collection. Obviously, Madison, he's incon been inconsistent this season, but... When Madison's at his best, he's a great set piece taker, as is Tielemans, but the difference that Talvin is, is that he's left footed, so they'll add something extra from particularly corners, but also from free kicks, or give us an extra dimension, if you like, from our set pieces, which previously we've just been very one dimensional, pretty much. Madison take most of them, occasionally Tielemans fills in. So, in terms of his ability, he's bloody good for a winger. You know, European quality, he's not quite your um, Marcus Rashford, Raheem Sterling level, but it'd be Similar level to Harvey Barnes. At his peak, he'd be well better than him, but he's definitely better than our current 
right wingers that we have in Mark O'Brien and Cengiz Under. In terms of his finishing, he's excellent in front of goal, but as his stats show, he's one on one with the keeper. He's great, you know. He's going to put him home generally. And he's not a selfish winger either, so he's more than willing to set up strikers or other players if they're in a better position, which will come in great leaps and bounds. And he's got excellent passing ability, so he can make those intricate passes that we used to see from Mares to Vardy a lot during our Champions League and Premier League winning season. As well as having great finishing and passing, which is obviously crucial for the winger, he's also got excellent dribbling, which is probably one of the other key attributes of a winger, is their dribbling. And he's in a way sort of similar to Ian Robin, I guess. You know what you're going to get from him when he's dribbling at you. You know, he's going to put a defender under pressure, cut in, have a shot from around the edge of the box or lay off someone else. But it's one thing knowing what he's going to do, it's another thing stopping him. And that's exactly what Talbot in this case, you know, he, you know, as a defender, you know that he's going to try and cut in when possible. And if he can't cut in, he's going to try and set up a teammate. But even when you try to stop him, he still finds a way to be able to pull this off, which is very impressive. So if we look at his most notable season in front of goal in terms of either like scoring or assisting, it was the 2017-18 season where he scored 22 goals and made 11 assists in 35 games. Now, it may, looking at it, it may all seem like he's a perfect sign, you know, everything's great about him, but there obviously are some cons about him. The most notable one was the fact that he has obviously played in the Premier League before with Newcastle back in the 2015-16 season, although it was literally only for 2015. He made 16 appearances and had one goal and three assists in that time, and it was just a poor season for him in general. And so as soon as that January transfer window came that season, he was sent back to Marseille on loan, I believe, and then at the end of that loan spell, Marseille brought him back, and since then he's improved a lot as a player. He has developed his ability. If you look at his stats before moving to Newcastle and after moving to Newcastle for Marseille, he's definitely improved a lot as a player. The last couple of seasons he hasn't been as good, although last season he only had a few appearances due to an injury, so he is definitely... Recovering from that now, he's finished his recovery and he's on the way back up to reaching his peak, which should be the next two seasons. Now, when we do look at that uh, lone Premier League season that he had at Newcastle, it is worth taking into account that he was under a terrible Newcastle side that ended up being relegated that season under Steve McLaren, where generally they would struggle to hit the score sheet with the only exception really being that one game against Norwich, where I think they scored like six or something like that. But even then... like. Most of the there was a lot of times that they were left scoreless during that campaign, so it's not necessarily surprising to see him have such poor goal return in that six months he was at the club. Now, another silver lining to this is the fact that there have been countless players who have struggled in their first campaign in the Premier League, and then, well, their first stint, I should say, then they've gone overseas, improved, applied their trade a bit, developed as a player, then they've come back and made leaps and bounds progress now, two modern-day examples of this would be Kevin De Bruyne and Mohamed Salah. Both of them were Chelsea rejects under Jose Mourinho. Neither really looked like they had a future. They both went overseas. Kevin De Bruyne went to Wolfsburg. Salah went to Roma. Both improved a fair bit, came back to the Premier League. Now Salah is one of the best wingers in the Premier League, and De Bruyne is one of the best midfielders in the world. You could argue he's the best central midfielder there is at the moment. Now, the only other concern from is whether or not we continue with this three at the back formation. If we continue with the three at the back formation, it would be very difficult for him to get in, just as he doesn't have that same defensive work rate that is required from someone to play with three at the back. Now, if we were to continue this way, Ricardo Pereira would be the more obvious option as a right midfielder, as he has got the ability to go up and down constantly for 90 minutes. But if we do change to a four at the back formation with two wingers, which... I would prefer, as it would mean that we could get more out of Harvey Barnes, and having Harvey Barnes and the potential of Florian Talvin on the other side would mean that we would be a great attacking force, better than if we only had three defenders. Now, normally because of his age, I would say no, because he's 28, you know, he's only going, we're only going to get a couple of good years out of him. However, he's available for a free, and he will definitely boost our slide, and will allow, I guess, the scouting uh, crew, or the scouting team, I should say, they'll have more time to have a proper look at young players that have a bright potential and we'll be able to bring them in, hopefully, this next season, and they can sort of learn from Talvin as he slowly 
uh, will be reduce the amount of game time he has. So I'd say it's a definite play we should go for, and I feel as though Rogers will probably want to bring him in as well, just to add that extra depth. So I'd say it's a definite yes for me, and I'm sure Rogers would probably go along with the same as he. Would. It's a no-brainer, really. Free transfer, player of his quality, still got a couple of years in him. There's not a lot to lose. Hello, Matt Elliott here. Be sure to watch Leicester Till I Die TV on YouTube and follow all their social media platforms for all the latest updates and news on Leicester City Football Club. Leicester Till I Die podcasts on the Apple iTunes, Spotify, Google, Anchor and all podcast platforms. Thanks for watching Leicester Till I Die. This is Chris saying goodbye and see you next time.